Thousands of times each year, an orange helicopter lands on scene to transport a patient. In all aspects of our operation, safety is the first priority. At Orange, we're committed to the safety of patients, crew members, emergency first responders, and members of the public. This video will explain how to ensure your team operates safely around the helicopter. Here's what we'll cover. Preparing yourself. Choosing, preparing, and securing the landing zone. Helicopter arrival, approaching, and loading the helicopter. Preparing yourself. Before the arrival of the helicopter, it is recommended that a first responder be designated as the person responsible for securing and maintaining the landing zone and as the main point of contact for the air crew. This person should not be directly involved in patient care. Everyone involved in the landing zone should wear personal protective equipment. This includes high visibility clothing or a vest, protective eyewear, hearing protection, a helmet with visor and chin strap fastened, and jacket and pants to cover bare skin. Choosing a landing zone. In sum, a landing zone should be clear, level, and secure. In most cases, an ideal site will be located downwind of the incident scene as the helicopter will take off and land into the wind whenever possible. A landing zone should be at least 150 feet or 45 meters away from all major obstacles. This includes power lines, poles, towers, trees, street signs, and vehicles. The area should be a stable surface such as concrete, asphalt, packed gravel or grass, and as level as possible. Preparing the landing zone. Small debris such as sticks, plywood, tarps and bags should be removed to ensure they are not ingested into the engine. Do not place flares, pylons, hose, caution tape or any other objects to mark out a proposed landing zone. It is essential that this area be cleared of all loose items. Remember, what you can see from the ground may not be visible from the air. So if you notice any obstacles such as trees or wires within the landing area, please identify this to the flight crew prior to the landing. If there is a hazardous materials or hazmat danger present, ensure the flight crew is notified as to the nature of any such dangers as soon as possible prior to landing. When hazardous materials are present, the landing zone should be located upwind of the incident. Determine an accurate description of the landing zone in relation to the scene location. GPS coordinates are the preferred method of identifying the site and can be used on their own or in conjunction with other means. Include highway numbers and distances to nearby towns. Provide directional or compass headings to the scene from the landmarks. Communications. If a supervisor or someone not involved in patient care is available, they can be assigned to communicate with the air ambulance crew directly through the Provincial Common Frequency, or PCOM. Information from the scene may also be relayed to the air crew through the local Central Ambulance Communication Center, which has the ability to contact the crew. Securing the landing zone. Place a minimum of two vehicles in a fashion that will keep other vehicles away from the site. They should be located at each end of the designated landing zone perpendicular to the road. It is good practice for emergency vehicles to park under any overhead wires. This indicates the presence of wires to the air crew. Personnel should also be in place to prevent access to the landing zone. Remember, even if all of the landing zone requirements are met, the captain of the helicopter has the final decision on whether to land and may choose to select a more suitable site. Once the landing zone is secured, simply stand back a safe distance from the site and wait for the helicopter arrival. Helicopter Arrival 
Extreme caution should be exercised when a helicopter is operating in the vicinity. Helicopters generate high winds. Rotor downwash is capable of reaching speeds of up to 160 kilometers per hour. This is particularly significant in winter months when there is snow on the ground. Personnel should take cover inside or behind vehicles while a helicopter is arriving or departing. Vehicle doors, windows, and access compartments should be closed. Also ensure that loose articles and equipment are left in the ambulance and that all articles remain secured until directed by the pilot or crew members. Vehicles, first responder personnel and bystanders are strictly prohibited from the landing zone for a radius of 150 feet or 45 meters until there is positive and definitive indication from the flight crew it is safe to enter the landing zone. Approaching a helicopter. Before moving closer to the helicopter, always look for a visual sign from the pilot that it is safe to approach. Only those personnel necessary to the task of patient loading should approach the helicopter. Only approach the helicopter with an orange escort when the rotor blades are turning. You must stay with your orange escort at all times. Be aware of the rotor disc at all times. Do not raise anything above your head. Always approach the helicopter at an angle at which you are able to make positive eye contact with the pilot. Never approach the aircraft from the back. If there is any doubt as to whether it is safe to approach the aircraft, do not approach. If you are on uneven ground, approach or depart from the downhill side. It has the most clearance from the rotors. During the helicopter departure, follow the same procedure as during the arrival. Secure all equipment. Stay at least 150 feet or 45 meters back and take cover inside or behind vehicles. Night Operations At night, air ambulance crews are able to rendezvous with a land ambulance at a helipad or airport or perform a modified scene response at a local hospital with appropriate facilities. In these cases, many of the same principles apply. Ensure you are a safe distance back, take cover as the helicopter arrives, approach the helicopter only with an escort be aware of rotor downwash. Please ensure that all strobe lights are turned off when a helicopter is approaching at night. Strobe lights are distracting to pilots, especially when they are using night vision goggles. Feel free to contact Orange if you have any questions about landing zone safety. Orange takes the safety of its patients, crews and partners seriously. We thank you for your attention and encourage you to review the information in this video frequently to ensure you and your team are safe around our helicopters.